Hi gang, and welcome to the Parachute Ejection Systems episode in our series of tutorial videos on high power water rockets. See the links in the description in this video below if you want to see other episodes in this series. In this episode we will be discussing four different methods used to eject the parachute. Each of these systems was created and tested in our quest to improve our water rocket world altitude record over the past 11 years. The techniques we will demonstrate in this video are electrochemical, threaded piston plunger, pneumatic, and hybrid. In the end, we'll show you what method not to use. You must decide on the type of deploy system you will be using before you make your payload compartment in nose cone because the design of these components is highly dependent on the deploy system you use. The challenges for such a system are the rapid acceleration and aerodynamic drag loads requires a sturdy system with a powerful ejection force. The small diameter of high pressure water rockets makes it difficult to fit the typical ejection system design in the confined space available. Weight savings are critical because any extra weight will severely reduce the maximum altitude. Over the years we have refined our system design and improved it incrementally to address these issues. This video will explain all of the designs we have experimented with and tested in our quest to go higher. First up is our electrochemical deploy system. When we first decided to break the world record in 2003, we were focused on designing a really simple system that could be constructed in a short amount of time. A common method used at that time was to use an acid-base reaction to generate gas pressure that builds up over time and activates the deploy system after a predetermined delay. The common acid-base reaction that we chose for our deploy system uses vinegar and baking soda to produce CO2 gas. The electrochemical deploy system that we created was intended to work as shown here. Our high-pressure water rocket has a payload bay on top to house the altimeter and the camera. On top of that is a container for the vinegar. A sealed parachute compartment goes on next to contain the CO2 gas. The baking soda is suspended above the vinegar. The next part installed is the parachute. Finally, the nose cone seals the end tightly. Once armed, the acceleration forces of the launch will cause the baking soda to fall into the vinegar and mix where it produces CO2 gas. This builds pressure over time and blows off the nose cone with the parachute. Getting consistent results proved to be difficult because the small amounts of vinegar and baking soda that would fit in our rocket would take a long time to build pressure. So we needed a way to increase the pressure. We tested other household chemicals containing acids and bases but the really strong reactions tended to produce toxic gases or very caustic chemicals, which we wanted to avoid for safety and environmental reasons. Since we know that heat speeds up this chemical reaction, we just needed to somehow add heat to the chamber. For this purpose, we installed a small wire-wound resistor connected to a 24-volt power supply as a heating element. This would warm up the vinegar while the rocket was pressurizing. This video clip shows a ground test of the system. We successfully used this system for countless world record attempts but we discovered that this method was messy, cumbersome, and time-consuming to set up. With each new world record we set, it became increasingly more difficult to get two successful flights with a new record average altitude during the two-hour time limit allowed. We felt that if we could make a system that was easier to arm, we could potentially get three or more successful launches completed within the time limit allocated. 
Picking the two highest of several launches within that time allowed would improve our chances of getting a new world record. So, we went back to the drawing board. Our second generation deploy system design was a servo motor controlled piston design. By this time we had now added a microcontroller board to our rocket to be able to remotely operate the onboard camera. So it was a simple matter of adding some extra code to control a servo motor, which we could use to push the parachute and nose cone off at Apogee. We initially had no luck getting this to work because the servo motors that we used did not have enough torque to push anything out with much force. Then we discovered that a small modification inside the servo itself could eliminate the end stops, making it a continuous motion servo. The addition of a threaded rod made from a nylon screw to the end of the servo would form a powerful linear actuator. Here's how the system works. This system starts with a sliding rack to hold the servo. A nylon nut is attached to the end of the rack. The servo is placed in the rack and can slide freely along it back and forth. The nylon screw is threaded through the nut and it attaches to the servo so that the assembly can move back and forth as the servo rotates. A piston is placed on top of the screw. The assembly is housed inside a typical payload compartment. A parachute compartment encloses the piston. The parachute is placed on top of the piston. The nose cone is friction fit into the open end. The piston deploy is armed and ready for launch. Once activated, the servo rotates the screw and this moves the piston assembly down the track until it pushes the nose cone and parachute off the end of the rocket. Here's a ground test video demonstration of the piston plunger deploy system in action. The drawback to this particular system is that it can take a few seconds to fully deploy the parachute. We also had some reliability issues caused by our own attempts to make the system overly compact and lightweight. We had a number of successful flights with this system, but we eventually decided to develop a newer and better system. The third design that we came up with is the pneumatic deploy. This ejection system concept was inspired by some pneumatic RC plane components that we stumbled across while shopping online. This system uses a small tank containing pressurized air. The tank is connected to a small air valve. Small rubber hoses connect the components together. When the valve is opened, the air can vent from the tank. When closed, the airflow is cut off. The air valve is opened and closed by connecting it to a servo motor. All of this is contained within a standard payload compartment. A parachute compartment is also used like in our previous designs. The parachute and nose cone are installed similarly as well. After launch, when the servo activates, the pneumatic valve is opened. This allows air to flow from the small tank and into the parachute compartment, where it will pop off the nose cone and deploy the parachute. We did some testing on a mock-up of this design, which can be seen here. Our ground testing proved that the pneumatic deploy system worked very well. But we never actually built a flight-worthy version of this design because the pneumatic valve we were using was made from aluminum. Since metal components are forbidden for use in water rocket competitions, we could not use this piece. We attempted to construct our own pneumatic valve entirely from plastic, but we were unable to get it to work properly using the tools that we had available. So we put this idea aside for future investigation because we had another concept that we wanted to test out. The fourth and most recent parachute ejection system that we designed is the hybrid deploy. 
Our newest and most efficient design is based on a design that we invented for use with water rockets made from soft drink bottles. We scaled it down and modified it slightly so that it would work with a high pressure water rocket. The concept for this system is quite simple. This design starts with a servo motor. The servo motor is enclosed in a payload compartment with an access hole on the side. A typical parachute is used. A typical nose cone is also used. The parachute and nose cone are connected to a parachute cover which is made from a sheet of plastic. One corner of the cover has a rubber band attached. The parachute cover is wrapped into a cylindrical shape around the components and then the rubber band is wound around it spirally and hooked onto the servo to hold it in place. When this system is activated, the servo will release the rubber band and this will unwind and pull off the parachute cover, leaving the parachute and nose cone exposed to deploy. This video clip shows a ground test of the system. This concept removes potential areas where our previous systems could bind up or jam. The hybrid deploy system is our current favorite design because it's easier to fabricate, easy to set up, and easier to arm. It's also quite simple to scale this design for different size rockets and different size parachutes too. We strongly recommend this system, and if you need a way to trigger it, we suggest that you build one of our do-it-yourself altimeters or one of our do-it-yourself servo timers. Designing and building a parachute deploy system for a water rocket is somewhat complex and at this point you're probably wondering why nobody uses a black powder explosive charge or a firecracker to eject the parachute similar to the way they do it with pyro model rockets. Traditional pyrotechnic model rockets have used this system for decades, and it typically works like this. An electronic timer in the payload compartment is typically used as an ignition system. A small explosive charge is placed on the top of the rocket. The explosive charge is enclosed in the parachute compartment. Flameproof paper or cotton wadding is placed on top of the explosive to protect the parachute from the heat from the blast. The parachute is installed above the wadding. Finally, a nose cone seals the end of the chamber. When the explosive is set off using an electronic trigger, it blows off the nose cone and ejects the parachute. In practice, this system would look something like this. So why not just take the easy approach and borrow the technique used by pyro rockets? Well, there are a number of good reasons why water rocket enthusiasts avoid pyrotechnic deploy systems. Firstly, explosions and fires go against the very foundation of what water rockets are all about. The entire hobby has been built upon the use of science and physics other than pyrotechnics to launch and recover the rockets. Secondly, the very act of detonating a homemade explosive of any kind is illegal in many parts of the world, and we do not want to promote any techniques which would be against the law. Thirdly, water rocket record competitions explicitly forbid the use of pyrotechnics for the reasons listed previously, and since we build these rockets for record competitions, we always make sure to comply with the rules before launching. Lastly, and most importantly, there is a huge risk of personal injury to consider when strapping any explosive charge to a pressure vessel pressurized near its bursting point. We can demonstrate this by showing you that a small charge by itself poses little threat of injury. But when we affix it to a pressurized soft drink bottle, 
with a mere 120 PSI inside, look at the carnage that can result if the recovery charge accidentally goes off. The shock from the explosive charge can cause the main pressure vessel to fail catastrophically. Just imagine what could result if this were to happen to a carbon fiber water rocket pressurized to 10 times the pressure that this bottle has. So if you're considering using a pyrotechnic deploy system on your water rocket and you can live with the fact that you will be thumbing your nose at tradition, you may not feel so good when you get hurt or someone else gets injured trying to emulate your dangerous techniques. Why not promote the safer traditional methods instead? We've shown you four different ones in this video that you can explore. This concludes our discussion of the various deploy techniques which we have developed over the years. If you have questions about anything we've shown, feel free to leave a comment below. We try to answer all the questions that we receive. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, and you will be definitely interested in some of the other videos that we have on our channel. Check them out and let us know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe because we really appreciate the support that we get from you all. See you next time.